Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. If you are new, then welcome to this channel. Well, I'm back with one more interesting project using Python Tickinter, which is a phone book, which is actually where you can see a bunch of things here. Here it is actually a form where you can see name, gender, telephone, email, and here you have a search button. And here we have some database operations, which is view data, add data, update data, and delete data. It's actually like a mini database. Well, I have to tell you guys, this is a bit a big project. It's actually similar to a mini project where you can understand how to manage a database so it is similar to database and you will make yourself a bit more comfortable with the sticking tour and the widgets that you have the logical part and how to use that logical part i'm gonna tell you everything about this thing and we are going to divide this project into three parts in the first part we will build layout which looks something like this and in the second part we are going to build the logical part and in the third part we are going to connect everything so that this project works for us and the first and foremost thing is let me explain you. So for example, if I give my name here and just give gender as female and just give a number because this is dummy data, I don't care about the numbers. I just give one, two, three at the rate of gmail.com. And if you click on add, you are seeing a pop-up, right? And if you click on okay, this data is actually added to this table over there, okay? And if you want to update, guys, I have to tell you one thing is don't update the telephone number because we are going to take this telephone number as a reference because telephone number is the unique number and you cannot give the same telephone number to more than one person, right? So I'm going to use this telephone number as a primary key to access the data from this table. And this is really an interesting thing and you have to be careful while updating telephone number. If you want to update telephone number first, you have to click on delete and then you have to give the details again and at the time you have to give the correct telephone number number if you are using this project for the real time if you want to update this one you just click on this one and give update here and just change the email id to girl at the rate of gmail.com and if you click on confirm you got a pop-up data has been updated successfully and if you click on okay this data will get updated and now you can see my email actually changed from one to three to girl Right? And you can even search by giving the telephone number. For example, the telephone number is 123456. And if you click on search, it will access that telephone number as a key and it will go to that table and it will access the entire data and it is actually showing us the list of this thing. I hope you guys understood. And you can even delete this thing. Let me show you how. If you click on view, you will see the entire data which is there in that particular table and if you click on this one and if you click on delete it will delete the data so yeah let's get started so in the first part i'm going to explain you the layout so let's build this interesting layout so for that let's create tkinter so from tkinter just import everything and we also need TDK because there are some widgets which are in the TDK so that we can access. So from Tkinter, import TDK. And for now, we just need these things. I'm going to use three colors here, which is white and blue. And one more thing is black. Let me get these three colors. Okay. So just give color zero is white. Oops, I gave it a comment. Just give color one as black. And I'm going to use a blue color. So we are going to use these three simple colors to build our interesting application. Now what are we going to do is we are going to build a window, something like this, and we are going to organize all these things. First, let us create a basic window. Actually, you guys already know how to create a basic window. For that, you just have to use TK and you're going to give title. For now, I'm not going to give any title so that it looks good to see. And I gave width as 485 and height as 450. And I just gave background color as white. This must be color zero. And I just uh, resizable kept as false so that it will not mess with that size of that window while building. And just give window dot main look so that it can run. And if you were on this one, 
you are seeing an empty cool interesting window and i know you guys want to build something interesting by seeing this window but follow me so that you can understand each and everything from the scratch now it's time to divide this interesting window into three parts the first thing will be the frame up where you just see name of that particular application and in the second part we are going to create a basic form so that a user can give details and can save his things here and in the third you are going to create a table which is a frame table Table where you are going to store the entire details and you are going to show them to the user so that user can understand that his data is updated or his data is added so yeah let us build this thing so first let's focus on dividing these window into three frames so let's do it so first let us create three frames so just give frame up equal to frame and we want this in window just give with 500 and give height as 50 and background color will be the blue one which is color color 2 I'm really bad at numbers and this is color 2 and what do we need Let's place this thing, just give frame up dot grid. Um, row value zero, column zero, and just give pad x zero, pad y one, and let's see. Yeah, we need something like this and here we are going to create a label which shows the app name. Let's also create a frame down and frame table. So instead of frame up, we'll give frame down. Frame down. And this time the row value will be 1. Column value will be 0 and what do we need and the height will be 150 and the background color will be white which is 0 color 0 white which is color 1 if you were on this one yes we need something like this and I did it on purpose because you guys can see the change of the frames that we are building and let's give background color as yeah and if you see this one this time there is a frame but you cannot see and we also need background color as white and let's also build a frame table here so for that this is really a bit interesting because here we are going to build a frame table this is nothing but just a frame so just copy this thing again and here just give table and update this one to table and here we are going to change the height from 50 to 100 and the background color will be the white one and just give frame table dot grid this time the row value will be 2 and column value will be same and just give column span equal to 2 so that it can occupy the entire space of that thing and yeah let's see you cannot see let me change the color so that you guys can see it which looks something like this and let's give height as 100 and yeah we are going to do everything according to the widgets that you're placing at the time so now we actually divided this frame into three parts so this is what we are going to do and let's organize the stuff that we have with the frames that we have okay let's do it so these are actually frames and now let's organize the first frame which is frame up just give frame up widgets and here we are actually going to create a label so for that just give label or just give app name equal to label of we need this in frame up so just give frame up and we need the text as phone book and just give height as one 
and font equal to let's give Vardana let's give size 17 and let's give bold and just give foreground color as black which is color 1 I think yeah and let's place this thing just give app name dot place place x value 5 and y value 5 and let us see yeah and it looks something like this so let's change this background color and just give background color as the color of that window that frame so just give background color equal to color 2 and foreground color as white which is color 0 and yeah we need something like this now it's looking cool okay now it's time to work on these things okay let's do it just give frame down widgets so first let us create label name so name equal to or just give name l l is for label so just give L underscore name as variable L is for label and name is for name and label and we need this in frame down and text will be name and give it this is mandatory so just give star here and give it as 20 and hide as one and just give font which is let's use ivy this time and give 10 as the size and let's give lane dot place give x value 10 and y value 20 i actually played with this number so if you want you can play with them too and just be careful while placing them So yeah, it looks something like this. So just give background color as white and anchor will be northwest. So background equal to color zero and anchor equal to northwest. Whoa, background color, it's not color zero. My god, I give color one, just give color zero and we run this one. And yeah, it looks something like this. And now it's time to create an entry for this name. So just give entry is for entry and n is for name. Entry name equal to entry. So just give entry and in frame down we want it. So just give frame down and width will be 25. And justify left. And we have to give this in quotes so that it will not throw errors on our face because that's the syntax to follow. And just give highlight thickness to 1. And give relief to solid so that we can see that entry. If not, we cannot see. And just place this thing. So e name dot place. Give x value to 80, which is somewhere 70 pixels of it. 80. And just give y value as 20. 
because we are going to place this entry in the same where we have name, we are just going to change the x value. Yeah, it looks something like this so that you guys can see this form. And let's also create other entries and other things as well. Just give this will be gender. The next thing is actually gender. Just give gender here. This is actually a label for gender and this will be gender. This will be entry for gender. And here we are going to create a combo box because gender we have to choose. So which is something like this combo box female and male. Okay, so here instead of entry we'll give combo box. And we need that in frame down and just give it as 27 and we are going to create values for that so let's delete this entire thing so let's give values for it so just give c gender of values equal to just create one will be empty one will be female and one will be male and we are going to place it x value will be 80 and y value will be 50 because somewhere down just give e gender here because we need values and we just placed it and let's delete this thing e gender okay this is actually combo, so just give C here instead of E. And just give C. And just give it, uh, and let's place this one. Instead of X value 10 and Y value 20, just give Y value 50. And yeah. So yeah, here we have name and here we have gender, which is female and male. The thing why we gave empty here is so that, you know, the initial value will be empty and user will choose the current thing. So let's create telephone and email as well. So just copy this thing. And this will be telephone. Telephone, telephone, and this will be the entry telephone. And all we need to change is instead of name, just give telephone here. Just delete this bit. Almost everything is same. Just place this in x value 80 and y value also 80. Let us see, and here the x value will be 10 and y value will be 8. The space and we're on this one so that it looks good. Yeah, okay. Now we have telephone, and now it's time to build email. Label email. And entry email. So now we created label email and empty email in here. This will be email. Just give some space. And we are going to place the email. X value will be 10, no change, but y value changes. Just give 110 and 110. Yeah, and here we have name, gender, telephone, and email. And let's also build these things. Search and some buttons, view, add, update, and delete. Let's do it. 
So now let's create a button. So just give button search. Because that's a search button and here we are going to give button. And we need this in frame down. Just give text equal to search. And height will be one. Background color. Let's give blue, which is color two. And give font, which is ivy. And just give eight. And just give bold. And just place this one. So just give b search dot place x value somewhere 290 and y value will be somewhere 50 this is actually text yeah it looks something like this so just give the background color as white foreground color as white Ground color as color zero and yeah here we have a cool search button and now we'll create an entry here so that user can give data so just give just give entry search equal to entry and just give frame down because we need this in frame down with 16 and justify left font equal to iv just give size as 11 highlight thickness to one and yeah relief give solid so that you can see that entry it will make a solid border just give e search dot please x value maybe 347 and y value 21 so you're gonna see an entry yeah and but the thing is this entry must go a bit down right so just give y value as maybe 50 but the thing is we'll just keep the search a bit more top near name so that we can keep view here right so just give y value 20 and y value 20 it will be near name right and now here you'll get a view button so let's create view just copy this one because we are going to do the same with this because that's a button this will be button view We are just going to change the place. This time y value will be 50. Yeah, now we here we have a view button and now let's also create these buttons. Add, update, delete. Copy the same. Just give button add. Button add and we need this in frame down and just give text will be add. Just place this thing in 290. In 400. yeah and let's increase these buttons width okay 
just give it as 10 do the same thing here yeah and now here we have view add also create update and delete so just update and update update and we have to change the value of x so for that just give y value as 18 Yes, we are going to do the same thing with delete. This will be delete. This will be delete. We are just going to change the value of y from 110. And this will be delete. So now here we did up to the layout of just one thing, right? It's time to create a table, frame table. So let's do it. So in order to create a table, something like this, first let's build a function, which is called show, which actually shows the entire data. From there, our actual story of this frame table begins. So first let's create a table, which will be about this thing. So just here, functions here. We are going to write all functions here. So just give df show. And here, first, let's create a global variable called tree. Okay. And we are going to use this variable to manipulate data. And the reason why it is global is because we are going to use it everywhere to manipulate data. So just give global tree, which is a variable. And now just create a widget called tree view which is this and we are going to create this in frame table and just give selection mode to extend it so that it can extend and just give column as list header and we are going to do that soon this list header okay and just create a list header here equal to it's just a list where you will have name gender telephone which is telephone number and email so here we have name gender telephone and email and we are going to use this list header here all right so now we have a list header which is having name gender telephone and email and we just created a tree which is nothing but a table with that list header and now we are going to create a scroll bar so for that just give esp which is just a name for a scroll bar just give scroll bar we name this in frame table and we are going to give orient equal to vertical vsp is nothing but for vertical scroll bar and command equal to tree dot by view all right and now we are also going to create a horizontal scroll bar for just just copy this thing create another variable called hsp which is horizontal scroll bar and here the scroll bar will be horizontal and this will be x view. 
we just created scroll bar but we didn't activate it for that just give three dot configure that means we are actually connecting the scroll bar to that particular table so that you know when you have data more than that at the time the scroll bar must work for us just give three dot configure y scroll command y scroll command equal to just give vertical vsp does set just attaching it and x scroll command is actually hsv dot set and yeah we just connected that scroll bar to this table now if you call this show The reason why it is throwing error is because frame table is somewhere down and the function is somewhere here. So let's copy this entire thing and we'll keep under this thing. Now if you were in this one, here you can see nothing, right? And let's also change this background color to white, which is zero. An empty thing because there is nothing we have to build okay we just created a table but there is no data inside this so let's insert some data into this table so that you guys can see what's exactly happening here for that we have to do a little more things so what we are going to do is we are going to create a table we just created a table in a table i think you guys know we have rows and we have columns right so just give three dot grid column will be zero and row will be zero and three dot grid which is vertical scroll bar and this time the column will be one and row will be zero and let's also create this is actually VSP HSP dot grid column will be zero, so will be one. Okay, first let us give some things here. So just give sticky equal to north, south, east, west, all directions. It have to stick to all directions so that we not make any mess and here just give sticky equal to because this is a vertical thing and it must be somewhere around that right so just give north south and this will be east west east to west and this will be north to south and this will be east to west just give sticky equal to east to west so let's give tree head let's work on tree head first So just give three dot heading zero text will be name and anchor equal to northwest. Do the same thing for gender, telephone, and email. This will be gender. and telephone and this is actually one this is telephone two three and this will be email just give sticky not fast show equal to headings okay and 
Here we have a table which is telling name, gender, telephone and email. Okay. So now it's time to insert some values into that. So for that, just for demo, what we'll do is let's create a list. Okay. So just give um, demo list equal to, uh, for example, name girl gender female and telephone number three to one one two three at the rate gmail.com and we are going to update this list into this table how are we going to do that for that just give a logic for For item in list, which is demo list, just give three dot insert in the beginning nothing and just give values equal to item. Just updating it. Just give here this thing. Yeah, and here, never forget that we have to give this in the form of an object, okay? If you don't give this in the form of an object, it will directly store girl here, female here, 321 here, something like that. It will not follow the order. You have to give in the form of an object. So if you were in this one, and here it's actually saving in the form of this okay so just be careful while storing the data treat this entire thing as an object okay one record or one data okay and you yeah, just be careful so what we actually did is here we just created a global variable which is called tree because we are actually treating that entire data as a tree which is a global variable you have to use global because we are going to manipulate this data in many ways while working with the database or while working with that file system so you have to be careful so just give global so that we can access it everywhere and we can manipulate it everywhere first we are going to create a tree view which is actually a table table like structure we need this in frame table just give select mode extended and yeah just create this table and once we created this table we need a scroll bar right we need horizontal scroll bar and a vertical scroll bar horizontal and vertical once this data reaches its limit at the time we need it to get scrolled so that we can see the remaining data so for that we need a scroll bar so vertical scroll bar and horizontal scroll bar so just create two scroll bars and here we are attaching that scroll bar to that table that we just created and we are just initializing that table here we are just attaching those scroll bars to the table and here we are initializing the headings and we are initializing the data that column okay so in order to insert the data into that just create a demo list here this is a demo list so just give demo list here And for item and demo list, that means it will go to each and every item. For now here, we have just one item. And if you copy this one, and if you insert one more item here, and if you rerun this one, and this time we are going to see the data two times in the table. When it comes to real time, you have to be careful with the telephone number because we are going to access our telephone number because this time, this telephone number is going to act as a primary key into this table so just be careful this is just for demo so i just tell you guys so that you know you have to give this stuff in the form of a list an entire list so just be careful while giving with it if not you'll mess yourself up i know how it looks if you mess yourself okay so this is what the show exactly does okay and now we are done with this layout part we just created a phone book which is of three frames 
which looks something like this. So here we just created a layout. In the next part, I'm going to tell you the exact logic, like how are we going to access that entire data that we have. And for that, we are going to use CSV files, which is common separated values. But for now, we just completed the layout. And now we are going to work on these database operations or the file operations that we are going to perform on the particular data, which is given by the user. Like if the user gives your data here and it clicks on add, it have to get updated in this particular table. If we select something and if we click on update, it have to show the data which is already there. And from here, we are going to update the data. And once you update it here, you are going to get a confirm button. We are going to build that button soon. And if you click on this one and if you click on this delete button, it must get deleted from that particular table that we created. So we are going to perform these interesting operations now on the data which is given by the user. But where is the data now? Well, we are going to create a dummy data. And for that, I'm going to use CSV file where you are going to create a CSV file using Python code. And so that we can perform operations on that particular thing. Yeah, first, let's fix this frame table. OK, let me see. Let us give relief equal to flat. Just give pad x 10. I think this will solve the problem. Yeah, and now you can see a frame table, right? It's good. Now we fixed it. Now let's work on these things. For that, I'm going to create a separate file called views.py where we are going to perform all the database operations over there. And once we are done, once we performed all this add data, search data, all these operations, we are going to connect those operations to this API that we created and we are going to update data using those things. So first, let's work on how to manipulate data using CSV file and how to use them and how to update everything. Let's do it. So for that, just create a file called views.py. And here the actual game begins because this is a really an important file which controls all the operations of that particular data. In order to manage the CSV file, comma separated file that we are creating, we are going to use a module which is already there in Python. For that, you have to import two things. One is import sys and one more is import csv. So these two modules are going to take care of the file that we are handling. In order to perform operations, like first and foremost thing is we'll create a file called CSV and we are going to add a dummy data into that. And for that, I'm going to write a function called add data. So just give df add and just give i as parameter. I'll let you know why. And later, we are going to create a CSV file. And for that, write code as width. We are going to open data dot csv and we are going to append we are going to use this file in append mode so just give append and just give new line equal to because whenever you're appending whenever you're adding data it will create one more empty line in the end that's what it exactly mean and just give as file we are going to use this data.csv as file and just create a variable called writer for writing the data. Initialize that csv.writer. There's a method called writer and just give this file as parameter. And yeah, now we initialized and now it's time to enter the data. So for that, just give writer.writer. And just send this i as parameter again. Okay, it's actually writer, writer dot write row. And for example, if you use this function called add, for example, with the data, just get anonymous. Just follow the same order which is there in the table, which is name, gender telephone number and email. So I'm gonna follow the same order. Name, gender, maybe mail, and just give any number, because this is the dummy data. 
can just give data at the rate gmail.com. And if you call this function add, and if you run this one, it will create a CSV file, data.csv file. We actually didn't have data.csv file, right? If you don't have a file, and if you are trying to access that file in Python, what it will do is it will create a new file called data.csv, and it will append the data that you gave using this function, okay? And if you run this one, it will create a data.csv file and here you are going to see the data here. I think you guys understood how this add data exactly works and for that we actually created data.csv and we are storing our data in the form of add function. Okay, and this is all about add. Once we add it, we want to know whether it's got updated into that CSV file or not, whether it's got updated in that particular table or not. For that, there is a function called C, C data actually. So in order to see the data, we are going to create this function. So I'm going to create a function called view, view, which shows us the data. You can create your own function for now. I'm just going to give view. So that what are we going to do is just create a list called data and we are going to open the csv file so just give it open data does csv we are going to open it as a file and let's initialize it with the variables so just give because here we are going to read the data so just give read equal to csv dot reader actually csv csv dot reader file it will read the file and it will initialize this read read one and once we are done with it and now we are going to read each and every row in that file so for that just give for row in read or reader you can give reader if you want I think reader makes sense and just give data dot append row and now what we are doing is we are just opening that data.csv file and we kept it in read mode and this time we are just going to get that entire data into this data list we're just adding those entire data copying those entire data into this data list and if you just give print data by the end it will print the data which is there in that file that's what here exactly happening and if you call this one view and if you run this one i think now you guys can see the data here here we have two one is anonymous Actually, it is printing three times. Why? Okay. Okay, now I understood why it is printing three times. We actually run this three times. I have to keep this in comments. And I'm going to delete these two things. And if you rerun this one, let me save it. And if you rerun this one, this time it will show us the data which is there in the CSV. This is what we are actually doing. What we are actually doing, we are just creating an empty list, getting the data from that file using this op with open data or CSV as file and by initializing it. And from each and every row of that particular data, we are just going to copy that. We are copying that entire data into this data list and if you click on print data it will give us the entire data and it will show which is there in that data.csv file this is what here exactly happening and when it comes to add function we're just opening or creating a file csv file and we are appending it how are we appending it by calling that function with the data given over there and remember that data must be given in a list and definitely follow the format which is there in that frame table which is name gender phone number and email just try to follow that
and view data will show us the entire data which is there in the csv file and data will add the data into that csv file i hope you guys understood and now it's time to create one more interesting function which handles data okay we know how to add data and we know how to view data and now it's time to build how to delete that data which is there in that csv file and how are we going to do that i'm gonna tell you an interesting thing i told you before even in the previous part one video i said that in order to like phone number is really a key thing here because we are going to use this as a primary key as we are going to access the entire data we are going to manipulate the data using this telephone number so we are going to use this telephone number as a reference to get the data from that particular csv file so let's do it so for that just create a function called remove and just give is parameter because this i plays a key role. I'll tell you how. And let us create a new list, which is nothing but an empty list. I'll tell you why. So we are going to access the telephone number, right? So just give telephone here. And that telephone number is nothing but this i. So we are going to pass that particular telephone number as parameter. And using that telephone number, we are going to delete that entire row in that data. Okay. And now we have a telephone number. We are created a new list. And now let's open that CSV file. So just give it open data.csv as file. And just give reader equal to csv dot reader file and for each and every row in reader for row in reader we will copy that row into this new list so just give new list dot append row and at the same time we will check whether that row has the telephone number which is given by the user for that just give for element in row we are going to check each and every element element is nothing but this anonymous is an element mail is an element telephone number gmail all these things are element for each and every row we'll check whether this particular element is equal to the phone number which is given by the user so for element in row if element equal to telephone what we'll do if both are equal we'll just delete that particular row right just give new list we are not going to delete that directly from the data.csv file first we'll copy that data into this new list and there we are going to make changes about that data because we should not lose the data which is there in that csv file because this is the real data which we are going to handle when it comes to real-time problems when it comes to real-time projects where you're really handling a data which is really important at the time you don't have to lose that right so in order to make it happen like in order to not to lose that data what we'll do is we'll copy that entire data into the new list we'll make changes in that new list and once we are good at it we will update that data into this data.csv exactly that's what here we are doing first we'll create a new list and we'll copy that new list from the csv and at the same time we're checking whether that particular element is equal to the phone number which user want to delete like the data or the list which user want to delete and once both are equal what we'll do is we'll just remove that particular data from that new list and we'll just update that new list that's what here we are doing so just give new list dot remove row will delete the entire row not just the element but the entire row okay and now once we got this new list so we are going to update this new list so in order to save this we will create one more function called save and inside this we will pass this new list as parameter and from where we are going to create this new list 
here itself. We'll create one more function called save. Just give JS parameter and we'll save this. Again, going to create. Again, we are going to open that data.csv file. And now we are going to copy that thing. How? Just give writer equal to same logic in order to append data or in order to write data. And just give writer dot write rows here rows, not just row because we are updating everything. We are getting all new things. We are not just updating only one data at the time. We are just going to update all of them, all rows. So just give right rows. Just be careful. Here it is right row and here it is right rows. Okay. While adding, you'll just add one single thing. But when you're updating, you have to update, especially in this case, you have to update almost everything. So this is what here we are doing. So what we did, we created a new list to copy the data from the CSV file because we don't want to modify the data directly in order to avoid that. In order to make changes, we'll create a new list and we are going to get the telephone number from the user. We'll open that file. We'll keep that in read mode. And for row in reader, we are just copying that data and appending it in new list. At the same time, we are checking whether that element or whether that row has the telephone number which is given by the user or not. If both are equal, if both are same, then we'll delete that row and we'll update that list. And once we updated that list, we just created a method called save and this new list will get copied into the data.csv. So for that, just open that file, give that in write mode and give writer.write rows of j. That means this new list will get updated here. I hope you guys understood. For example, Anonymous has this as telephone number. And if you copy and remove call this function with this number. And if you run this one, and we want to see the list, right? And if you give view again here, just Keep it here. Let me give an extra data here. Just copy this thing and give comma. And this time give macf any any name. Save it and just give this in write mode. And we'll give new line. Once we are done. See here you are going to see an empty list. And let's also add this data again. We have to be careful while deleting the numbers. So just give demo as name. Just give mail. And give data as one, two, three. And here, just give demo the rate of gmail.com. And if you run this one, it will add and it will delete the data which is having this number. Let's give one more add. Let's see. So here you are seeing the first one got deleted and the second one is this one. In this way, we are going to delete the data. And one more thing is remember that when you are deleting the data, please be remember of this telephone number because using this telephone number itself, we are going to access data and we are going to delete data and just don't try to get the same telephone number. If you have same telephone number to more than one row, then it will delete all the entire rows. Okay, just be careful with this phone number. Now we created a remove and now it's time to work on update and search. 
keep these two things in comments and even this thing because it will add the data again when you are updating or when you're run, rerunning this program okay and now just create a function called update and here we have to update and in order to update we need that data and we have to know what data is that so for that we need i as parameter we are going to get the phone number again and just we are going to do the same we are going to get the new list and we are going to get the telephone but the thing is here we are going to get the telephone number a bit different so here we'll give i of zero i'll tell you why we'll open again the data file so with open data.csv and in read mode as file just initialize that reader equal to csv dot reader of file and for each and every row in reader will copy that we are doing the same thing which we already did like this while removing the data we are going to copy the previous data and at the same time we are going to check for element in row if element equal to telephone we'll give those variables so just give i of one next we have gender which is i of two telephone i of three An email I of four. Now what we'll do is we'll create a list, updated list called data. So just give data here, data equal to. We'll give, we'll pass all these updated values: name, gender, telephone. And email. Once we got these updated values, we'll get the index of that particular row. How? Just give index equal to new list, new list dot index of that row. Just give row. Like what we are exactly doing is, for example, just imagine in the beginning we have a telephone number and later we have some, some name. Just copy this entire thing. You guys will understand why. This is actually a string, so just give in string and in the beginning just give that telephone number again I'll tell you why okay what we are doing is when user want to update this list we will pass telephone number two times and we'll keep this telephone number in the beginning itself so that it will be easy for us to access and make changes okay we'll not do this explicitly we are going to do this implicitly we are going to get that telephone number and we'll keep that in the beginning of the list and then 
we'll open the CSV file, we'll search for this thing which is there, like we'll search for this entire thing having this telephone number. Once both are equal, we will create those variables again, name, gender, telephone and email and we will update that I of 1, I of 2, I of 3 and I of 4. What are these things? 1, 2, 3 and 4. We are going to update all of them but the thing is Guys, remember that don't change the telephone number because that's actually acting as a key. If you change everything, you might lose the data or the interpreter will throw errors on your face saying that it's, it doesn't exist, okay? Just be careful. If you want to update data, just delete that thing and update again and add again, okay? And once we updated these values, we are creating one more list called data which stores these updated data. And we will get the index of the particular thing by giving new list.index of the particular row. This entire row index we are going to get. Don't get confused. I think now you guys understood. And now we have to update this data. So now we have this data and we also have this index, right? Now we'll update this, that new list of, we'll update that row by accessing its index your index equal to data and now the data will get updated but once we got this updated list we have to update that into the csv file right now we just created a new list and we got we copied the csv entire data and we updated that in the new list we have to update that in the CSV file as well. So for that, we will create one more method called update new list. So just give update new list method. We'll send this new list as parameter. And here we are going to create that update new list. So just give df update new list. And we'll give JS parameter this time. And so once we got this, now we will open that data.csv file with in write mode this time. Okay, with open dot with open data dot csv in write mode. And whenever we are writing something, we'll create a new line in the end. And as file writer equal to csv dot writer and writer dot write rows of i. That's it. It will update the csv file for example let's just give some sample what do we have in csv file this demo right so we'll try to change this demo to some name okay so just give sample equal to first we'll give that phone number as the key and then we'll give the data so instead of demo we'll give um, okay, let's give my name. Google coder. And just give as female instead of male. And give the same telephone number because we are going to keep that data. And just give girl at 1 to 3. Girl 1 to 3 at the rate of gmail.com. Now, if you call this update, not update new list, just copy this, just call this update method and send the sample as parameter. Okay, just keep this inside this if and now if you see this one and if you see this one and now the data got updated. Everything changed but the phone number didn't change because that's the key for us so I didn't change. 
Okay. So in this way, this update data exactly works. I hope you guys understood. And yeah, try to keep this inside this if element equal to telephone number. If that particular telephone number matches the number given by the user, then at the time only we are going to update the data. So we gave everything after that inside this if statement. Okay. And now if you call this function with the sample given, it will update the data that we have. Okay. And keep this in comments so that it will not up update again. And now it's time to work on one more interesting simple function which is called search. Just create a function called search. Yeah. Search. We need i. And create an empty list called data. And we are going to search by getting the telephone number as a reference. So just give telephone equal to i. We are going to open that CSV file. And just give this in read mode. Initialize it. And for row in reader for and we'll search for elements for element in row if that element equal to telephone number we'll just get that data data dot append row and it will return that data that's it so what we are doing we are creating an empty list and we'll get the telephone number as a reference and we'll open that csv file we'll keep that in reader mode we will initialize that and for each and every row in reader like for each and every row this is just a demo so i just gave one data we'll delete this thing and now we here we have three data for example for each and every row means this entire row and it will check each and every element inside this and it will check the phone number. And if it got the phone number which is searching by the user, then at the time it will copy that data by this data.append row and it will return that data and it will show that as output. That's what this search exactly for. For example, if you give search I give phone number one to three and give print data. If you run this one, it is showing the data which is having one to three. So here we have okay, two times there is a girl coder which is having one to three because it's adding again the data by this instructions okay let me delete these two things and let me save it and let me delete all these extra things here so here we have one two three just give one two three four here because we must need a unique phone number So if you click on this one, it will show us the data which is having one to three. Okay. So in this way, this exactly works. Now we actually completed all these operations which are there in this particular API. And now we have to connect these operations to this. Once we are done with this logical part, now it's time to connect this logical part to the API that we have. And we are going to manipulate data using the CSV file data.csv, which is commas operated values where you'll see a bunch of dummy data here. This is just for demos. So I think it added when I'm running the code again and again. It's fine.
So now it's time to add that logical part to the API that we built. If we click on view data, it have to show us the entire data, which is there in that database or CSV file. If we click on add, it have to add and it have to show to us. And if we click on update, it have to fill all these entire things by itself. And we are going to update them. And if we click on select this and click on delete, it have to delete the entire stuff. So yeah, let's work on this thing. In order to work on this thing, first we have the logical part in views.py, right? And we are going to use this views.py file in this main.py by importing it from views, import everything. And make sure that these two files must be in the same package, guys. Okay, just remember this to do while you're building something. Whatever you're building, keep everything in one folder so that you'll never, you know, make a mess while doing those kind of stuff. So from views, import everything. And first, in order to view data, if you guys remember in part one, we actually built this show, right? While working on this frame table, we built it. Now it's time to work and we are going to use this show. Instead of this thing, we'll just give view here. Okay. And this view is actually from this views.py okay from this views.py we are going to import and here we are not returning anything if you don't return anything it will throw errors on your face let me show you what is that error and if you save it and if you run this one it will say that see there's nothing none type object is not iterable because we are not returning anything so it will throw errors on our face so we'll give return data okay and if you return data this data will get stored here in this demo list and for item in demo list we are going to insert that into that table from csv file to the frame table in the api okay and save this one and rerun this one and yeah here you can see the first thing is empty because here in csv file the first thing is empty let me give it save this again and rerun this one so here you are going to see the first entry right so if i give my name and i have to add that so we have to connect that add logic to this add button so for that what we have to do is so in order to add data, first and foremost thing that user will do is he'll give the entire names, right? His name, gender, telephone number, email, and we are going to get these data first. So first what we'll do is we'll create a file called add or insert. So just give df insert and just give name equal to what is this entry where we are getting name, which is enum, right? Enum.get, egender.cgender.get, etelephone.get, and email.get. So we are going to get four values from those four entries. So just give enum.get. Gender equal to cgender, which is a combo box, dot get. telephone or phone number you can give whatever name but give a name that makes sense e telephone dot get now email equal to entry email dot get so we are going to get these values from there those entries and now we'll create a list called data. And give these names over there. Name, gender, telephone, and email. So now we have a list which stores the entire values and now we are going to store them into that file, the CSV file, and we are going to show that. How are we going to do that? For that, if the entries are empty, right? If name is empty and gender is empty, if any one of the entry is empty, 
like if you're in this one if any one of these entry is empty then at the time we need a warning message showing that please fill all the fields okay so for that there is a logic and it's pretty simple if name equal to empty string or if gender equal to empty string or if telephone equal to empty string or if email equal to empty string then at the time it have to show as a warning and for that we are going to use this message box module which is from python so for that just give message box so for that just give from tkinter import message box and we are going to use a warning show warning method from this message box and if any one of them is empty just give message box dot show warning We'll give data and please fill in all fields. Yeah, it will so that user can understand. Oh, I have to fill everything in that form so that I can store it in database or store it in that particular table. And if everything is fine. And then at the time what we'll do we'll call this add function which is there in views.py and just send this data as parameter and we'll print the message to the user so that user can know that the data is added it's actually message box message box dot show info data just give data added successfully yeah it will show this thing what are we doing if this function is being called first it will take the data from that entry and later it will create a list of those given data and then if any one of the entries nothing like an empty string if user didn't give any one of the data then at the time it will just give a warning saying that please fill in all fields if everything is fine then at the time it will call this add data this function which is from views.py i hope you guys understood how this ad exactly works i don't have to explain i'll just tell you how to attach this if you want to know more about this logical part just go to part two and understand it clearly when you call this function it will add the entire data and at the time we will just let user know that data were added successfully so at the time user can understand okay data added successfully let me see so now user wants to see the data in the table which is there in that API. So for that, we'll call show function again. But before that, we have to delete or we have to make the entries empty, right? So for that, what you will do is, we'll keep this inside this. Just give ename dot delete just delete that previous entry just give zero and end and do the same thing for all four fields this is actually c gender c gender combo box gender and e telephone Just follow the same order and entry email okay and once you made them delete like once you deleted them 
and user wants to see the data in the tables all the time just give this show function again and yeah in order to make this function work for us we have to we have to call this function so just control c and just give where's this view button no add button right so just give command equal to add command equal to insert yeah now let's see whether it exactly works or not if you rerun this one okay and if i give master meal three to one If you click on add data added successfully we are getting a message box and if you click on ok it will show the entire data that we have okay so in this way this insert exactly works i hope you guys understood the logic of insert we are just getting the entries from the user we are creating a data we are making it as a list because we need an object and we are making it as an object and we are sending this object as a parameter to the function that we created and we used that py in part two. And if any one of the entry is empty, then at the time we have to tell user that please fill all fields. So for that we are giving, we are using message box. If data added successfully, we are letting the user know that data added successfully. And at the same time, we have to delete the previous entries over there so that user can understand that okay it's it's again from the beginning and we have to show this to the user so for that just call show function and yeah so in this way the insert works and we added this insert to add and now we have an update button we have delete button so let's work on them so first just give PDF. Instead of update, we already have update in the views.py if I'm not wrong. Yes, so instead of update, we'll give to update. To update. This time we'll try to give this in exception. First, user have to select the value from that particular table. If user didn't select, then at the time we have to show a warning to the user that, hey, you have to select a particular field or a particular row in that frame table so that I can delete that thing. Okay, so just give try, which is an exception. And what we'll do is we have to get that data from this global tree, right? So for that, this is actually a tree, which is a global variable. This is the reason I gave global so that, you know, we can access this tree variable everywhere in the code. So in order to get that thing, we'll just give tree data equal to tree dot focus it will get the data which user selects okay and and once we got the data we are going to create we are going to get that data so first tree dictionary just create a variable called tree dictionary and tree dot item just get this tree data okay and now let's get those values so for that just give tree list equal to tree dictionary of values we are just trying to grab the entire data which is there in that frame table all right and now we got the values split those values like we need name gender telephone and email right so just give name equal to string format of tree list of zero and now once we got name we'll get gender and this time Gender is actually from list of 
one and we also want email this is two actually this is telephone right and email is three all right and now we got the entire data insert them into the entries so for inserting what we'll do is just give entry name equal to just give entry name dot insert equal to zero comma the name which you got from that frame table and entry or combo gender dot insert and entry telephone dot insert telephone and we also need email so entry email dot insert email after giving those numbers after changing those entries now the user want them to get updated once the user changes those values there will be a button which will get appeared over there on the interface which is called confirm button once the user updates those values if we click on that confirms button it will get added to the database it will get updated to the database or the csv file that we have okay so for that we have to create a function called confirm so just give confirm df confirm so give new name equal to we are going to get those from enum.get new gender equal to cgender.get new telephone equal to e telephone dot get new email equal to e email dot get so now we got those values from the entries again once the user changed them we got those entries again and now it's time to add these details to the frame table so for that we'll create again a data list which will have this new name new gender new email and new telephone right new telephone follow the order okay if not you'll mess things up new telephone okay now we have new name new gender new telephone and new email we have new data in this data file okay in this data list now what we'll do is we'll just call this update function okay we'll just call this update function so for that just give update just send this data as parameter it will get updated once it's got updated we will tell user that data updated successfully so for that just give message box dot show info data updated successfully and yeah and now we have to delete the previous entries again so copy the same logic and paste it here so that the previous details in the entry will get deleted okay 
so in the same way we have to destroy the frame table widgets again so that we can see the updated widgets over there okay so for that just give for widget in frame table dot w in for children like we're just going to delete those children's in that frame table so that we can see the new values over there new frame table the updated frame table so just give widget dot destroy destroying the previous one and we'll also destroy that confirm button so that you know we cannot see that confirm again the confirm button will appear only when you click on that update button okay so just give button confirm dot destroy but we actually didn't created this button yet we will do this we will do this now and just once everything got destroyed we'll show the data again the new data it will show and it will give the new data so here we are going to create that button so just create that button so button confirm equal to we'll copy the same button which is there but instead of delete it will be confirmed okay and button confirm dot place give x value as 230 and y value as 110 and we had a try but we didn't have accept so just give accept give index error because it is not selecting anything so for that we are we use index error so just give message box dot show error error select one of them from the table and yeah it will show this error now in order to make this work for us we are going to call this function here in update just give command equal to to update let's give 290 and what do we need and here Let's give command equal to confirm. And in update data, we have to send the telephone number as well. If you remember, in the beginning, we have to send telephone numbers. So we'll give telephone number again. So just give new telephone again. And now it will go to update and it will get this value and based on this value it will change all these values okay so the mistake is here guys here actually i gave j right here we have to give j and we're just updating a row if you give right row it will it will change all these rows like it will delete all of these rows and it will just write one single row that you just updated okay if you want to avoid this error just then just give right rows here it will solve the major problem for example if i add one more data just give 567 and if you click on add it will get added and if you want to update it just click on this one now this is what tree dot focus is tree dot focus means it will get the data which is there 
and if you click on this one what happens is this tree dot focus will get the data into update and it will make it as a dictionary and it will then access the list of those values in this way and from this list we got this name gender telephone and email and once you got them you will insert them in the entry and once you inserted them and use a job to change those values once user changes those values and at the time if user clicks on that confirm button what the program will do is it will copy all those details from those entries again it will make it as a data list and it will send this list entire list into this data function update function and remember that in update we have to give telephone number in the beginning as well that it will go and search for that particular thing and update it okay once it get updated we will get a message saying that data updated successfully and it will delete the previous entry values and it also deletes the frame table and it will delete the confirm button and it will rerun that show method so that you know it fetches the new frame table and it will show us the new list this is how this exactly works so if you want to update it click on it click on update just give the coder and click on confirm update it successfully and yeah boom so in this way update exactly works and now we have to work on remove and search two more okay for that even to remove we need the data which user chooses right for even for that we are going to use tree dot focus and we are going to create an exception so that if user didn't choose and at the time if user clicks on that button it have to show that exception that you have to choose all fields so let's create a method called to remove because there is already a remove method from views.py and exception try and accept okay we'll give something for now and we'll give something here okay so just copy this entire data to get the tree to get the selected values and copy it here now we have these values right so now we are going to get the phone number so tree dot telephone or phone number you can give whatever because we are using telephone mostly so we'll use this so str string of tree list of two and we'll just pass this phone number so just give remove of free telephone yeah we'll get this phone number it will delete that phone number which is from views.py here we have remove method from so from here we got this method and this actually deletes the phone number and once it deleted this same message box dot show info success data has been deleted successfully okay and once we are done we are going to delete the widgets as well and we are going to update the table again so for that do the same thing just copy this thing and paste it there Yeah, that's all now it will show the index error so copy the same thing and paste it here because user have to choose anyway in order to delete that thing 
So yeah, this is an exception, which handles exception. Okay. And now we are going to call this to remove method when user clicks on delete button. So here give command equal to to remove. Or you can give delete. So we'll give show here. This have to be in read mode. And now if you rerun this one, once you got rerun and if you click on this one and if you click on delete and if you click on OK, the, the previous data will get deleted. And one more thing, guys, whenever you're giving names or whenever you're giving phone numbers, then at the time, don't give any gaps because if you give gap, it will take even the gap as a string and it will not consider the data that you're giving. OK, just be careful while giving the data. And if you're mainly giving by this, if you give any gap, it will not delete that particular thing and it will throw error on your face that or it will not even throw any error. It will just do nothing over there. It will not understand what to do. So just don't give any gaps. Okay. I think now you guys understood how to delete data. For that, what we are doing is we'll just get the data. We'll send that data, we'll send the telephone number of that uh, particular row in by this remove method. And it will go to the views.py and here it will run this entire remove method. And again, once it removes, it will show us the message box saying that successfully deleted. And once it's done, we'll destroy the entire widget of the frame table and we'll show the updated widget. If the user didn't select any one of them, then at the time it will say to the user that select one of them from the table. So yeah, this is how this remove exactly works. And now it's time to work on the last and the final one, which is the search one. So let's work on it. So for that, you just have to create the uh, search or just give to search. Because we already have search function in views.py, right? So first, in order to get the search, in order to get, even for searching, we are going to get the telephone number. So if user gives telephone number, so just give telephone equal to, from where we are going to get that search? From that entry search, okay? The search dot get, and based on that thing, will search the data and just give there is a method called search from that views.py and just give that telephone number as parameter and for example here we have just one single data right okay let me add some more data while running and once you added some more data for example give um youtuber okay and give mail for example and just give the name phone number as something 67 and email and add it and for example you have programmer and just give female and give 89 just for demo and just give pro at the rate gmail.com and add one more data like now we have a bunch of data in the future we'll be having 50 to 60 thousands of data and at the time we need search the search thing right we can search by giving the telephone number because that's the unique number everyone uses so if you give telephone number as for example 67 and if you click on the search button it have to just show that like it have to delete all these things from this frame table and it have to just show that one single thing here. So in order to do that, like this, if you see this one, for example, here the telephone number is 321, right? So if you give 321 here and if you click on search, it is just showing that one particular record. In the same way, we are going to do 
So for that, what it is doing, it is deleting the previous tables over there. It is not deleting the data, but it is just deleting the table. The data is safe in this data.csv, okay? So it, in this way, we are going to do. So for that, we have to call a function called delete. Just give delete command. It will delete the previous widgets in three. So three dot delete. Just give, it will delete everything except the children, the children which is from that search. Okay, and now we'll run this delete command. And now it will update the item. For item in data, just give three dot insert From where we are getting this item? From here. And in order to run this one, just copy this one and where we have search button. So here, just give command equal to search for to search. If you run this one and if you see a bunch of data here if you just give 67 and if you click on search it will just show us the 67 and if you click on view it have to show us the entire data don't worry we'll work on it so here we have a view right so here we'll just give command equal to show then it will show us the entire data. For example, 89 search, right? View, it will show us the entire data. And if you click on this one, delete, it will delete. And if you, if you want to update it, programming code for example and if you click on confirm it will update the programming code so just give here once everything is done instead of email we'll give search it will empty that entry If you give 67 search yeah it's actually emptying it that's what I want okay so yeah this is what a phone book exactly looks like and I'm super 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 happy to share this project with you guys and I personally learned a lot and I got more experience with the ticketer and I understood more about message box how to use a bit more you know, creative way, message box. And I also learned how to work with tables in Tkinter. And I also learned how to organize an API, something like this. It's really cool, interesting. We can even update it a bit more in a creative manner. If you want, you can, you know, update it. And we can even connect this little phone book to our, you know, real-time projects where you can get data from the users. And it's like a mini database. It's like a mini project. In the future, we are also going to build something like this. But this time, we will work on real-time project. And yeah, this is really an interesting thing that I've ever done on my own. I hope you guys learned something new and interesting today by completing this project. I really appreciate your patience and the way you learned. And I hope you really, really enjoyed this tutorial. And... Yeah, I'll be back with one more interesting cool Tkinter or Python project in the future. 
If you like the video, then hit that cheer to the like button. If you are new to this channel and if you still didn't subscribe, then what are you waiting for? Just go and tap the red button so that you guys never miss an update from us. So yeah, I'll be back with one more interesting video. See you in the next video.